In this Elden Ring video, I'm going to be showing you my Berserker build. This is a strength-based build that uses two great swords to just absolutely slaughter everything. If you've been looking for a good strength-based build in Elden Ring, then this guide is for you. The two classes you can use to make this build are Vagabond or Hero. I personally chose Vagabond. It doesn't really matter too much which you choose. Your stat spreads are not going to be that much different. You're still going to have to put some points here and there. But you could do either of these classes. So once you begin the game, the first thing that you're going to want to do is go pick up the Lord Sworn's Great Sword. This is in the Gatefront Runes. It's in the chest there on the back of a carriage. And make sure you grab the whetstone in the runes there as well down the steps. That way you can put an Ash of War on it if you want. Once you have that, the next thing you're going to want to pick up is the Erd Tree's Favor. This is located in Fringe Folk Hero's Grave, which is where that gargoyle statue is right at the beginning of the game with that kind of white fog there. If you have a Stone's Word Key, if you took one as your starting gift, you can go down there immediately. If you took a Golden Seed, which is what I usually recommend taking for the extra flask, you'll need to find one. These aren't hard to find. They're all over the place. You don't even have to kill some enemies. Like if you go up the hill in Storm Hill, there's one right next to the NPC up there. You can just pick up and go in there. So that's really easy to get. You want to go down there, and there's going to be an area where the ramp narrows as you're going down when you can fall off either side to your death. If you look carefully as you approach it, you can drop right over the lip. There's sort of a hidden area down there. If you make your way down, you'll find the Erd Tree's Favor lying on the ground. It's guarded by like two really tough enemies, so I don't suggest trying to fight them. Just run by them, pick it up, die if you have to. Make sure you don't have any runes on you when you go down there. And then you'll have this really good uh, talisman that boosts your uh, health, that boosts your stamina. Really, really good to have. And it also boosts your equip load. After you've gathered that, the next thing you're going to want to do is go pick up the Claymore, which is located in Castle Morn. Again, this is another item that you don't even have to kill anything to get. You just go into Castle Morn, run by the enemies there by the fire thing, kind of go into the doorway there on the right side, and on the left immediately through that doorway is a chest. It's got the Claymore inside. So now you can dual wield great swords and you're going to really start packing a punch. You're going to want to get these upgraded right away. Again, there is the statue up there on Storm Hill that uh, if you get the trolls to destroy, has like six you know, upgrade materials in it, and the tunnels as well have a lot of upgrade materials. So go ahead and get those. If you need more, because you're going to want to upgrade both of these weapons, you can farm the soldiers in the Gatefront Ruins. They drop them. It's a pretty low drop rate. Like if you kill the whole camp, you usually get about one maybe. But that is a way you can farm some early on if you're having trouble getting them. There is one other item that's really good for this build, but you're not going to get it till later on. I'm just going to mention it here because it should be something you strive for eventually that's not too far into the game, is the Claw Talisman. This enhances your jump attacks. You do jump attacks with this build all the time. In fact, if you're not jumping attacking, you're not doing this build right. It is devastating to jump attack with two weapons. Jump attack, jump attack, jump attack, and get the Claw Talisman when you can. It's located in Stormvale Castle. It is absolutely devastating. The exact location of that is located on the wiki. Talking about attributes, in terms of strength and dexterity, you want just enough in order to meet the requirements for the Claymore. You have the dexterity requirement for that and the Lord's Sword Greatsword by default, so all you really need to do is get to 16 strength pretty quick, and you'll be able to use both of these weapons at the same time, no problem. Once you've done that, I like to pump Vigor and Endurance. I like to get my Vigor up to 15 quickly and then start cranking Endurance. Endurance is not only going to give you more stamina, which is great because you're jumping around, rolling around, attacking with two huge weapons that chew up stamina, but it also increases your equip weight, allowing you to use heavier armor, which is going to protect you because this is a very, very aggressive build. You're going to trade damage a lot of times with this build in order to speed up fights, which is fine, and you want to make sure you reduce the amount of damage you take, and you also want to be able to medium roll. So if you are in that heavy roll range, you're going to fat roll, which isn't ideal so make sure that you increase your endurance so that you can wear heavy armor, dual wield both weapons, and still mid-roll. Eventually, you're going to want to get Vigor up to 20 and Endurance up to 20. And at that point, you can start cranking Strength. You can actually change the scaling on these weapons with Ashes of War in order to make heavy versions that scale better with Strength and the sort of quality that they start with. So change them to heavy eventually, but early on, if you change them to heavy, you'll actually do less damage. So there's no reason to change them to anything rather than standard at the beginning of the game. So the way this build works is that when you're dual wielding these weapons, you're using the L1 button to attack with both at the same time. They attack slightly slower than you would if you hit R1. If you hit R1, you'll only swing your right hand weapon, which is a bit faster. So there are scenarios where you may want to swing faster, like if you're fighting dogs or something, or a very fast enemy, or like a you know one of those little imp guys in the catacombs that's like after you. You might need to swing quickly so he doesn't stagger you before you swing. Um, that's a scenario where you might use R1. But most of the time, you're going to be using L1. 
in order to hit with both weapons at the same time, which is what really makes the damage of this build sing. Beyond that, jumping attacks are what make this build really, really work. Uh, you're going to want to jump and use L1 constantly. You can one-shot many enemies by doing it. Just jump L1 from one enemy to the next. You'll be hopping all over the screen. It's quite fun. You're going to play very aggressively with this build. And what's really great is when you're like fighting bosses and stuff and you like close the distance and jump in. Like you, you're going to start fights sometimes or you know, you're not necessarily always going to wait for bosses to swing. You can bring it to them by jump attacking and then reacting to what they do, um, rolling away or whatever. Um, a lot of times they'll swing horizontally when you jump and it'll go right underneath you and you'll land on them and attack them, which is great. And sometimes you can get another attack off. You just need to watch and pay attention to what they do. A couple of really good tips for this fight are that you can actually buff your weapons with like greases. There are a lot of greases you can find all over the game and you can craft them as you pick up items. The armor cookbooking cookbook one is like where the, you know, bandit mercenary camp is like by the gatefront ruins. Like just go over to the storm hill a little ways. You'll find them riding around there, there. And that allows you to craft fire grease, which you can buff your weapon with to enhance your damage. Another really great thing about this build is that you have like complete freedom of Ashes of War that you want to put on there. There are so many different Ashes of War you can put on. Make sure you put it on your right hand weapon. That way when you hit L2, you'll use it. Warcry is really good for boosting your damage. Just keep in mind that if you use Warcry, you can't use Fire Grease and Warcry together. So that's a good way to boost your damage. I personally really like Quick Step. I find that I don't need it all the time, but it's really nice to have, particularly on tough boss fights, where you can just like dodge out of the way, attack, dodge out of the way, attack with quick step. It is really, really fun. And if you happen to PvP, I imagine this would be absolutely devastating as well. You just troll people with a quick step. It costs almost no FP. You don't need any, hardly at all, FP flasks for this build. You're going to go like 95% health, 100% health, 0 FP for this build. And lastly, this build works exceptionally well on horseback. The Claymore has a, just a fantastic moveset on, on horseback. It's really easy to hit enemies, has really large hit boxes. You're going to find mounted combat on horseback is very, very easy with this build. So that's my Berserker build. It's absolutely devastating. If you like strength-based builds, you should give it a try. Dual wielding these weapons is very, very strong early game, and these are two weapons you can do it with. So I hope you enjoy it. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. Probably going to be moving on to more advanced builds next. I'll keep you guys updated and I'll keep getting builds out as soon as I can.